Hey everyone, I hope you all are doing good and having a wonderful day. In this video, I'm going to show you an amazing tool that you can use to find links or some information from a JavaScript file, right? So I was going through my Twitter account one day and then I found this particular tweet which you're seeing right over here in which this particular hacker has found a uh, IDO vulnerability that resulted in four digit bounty for him right so many many congratulations for him and now let's try to see what this tool is about and how we can use this tool into our penetration testing as well right so before going into this video if you haven't checked out my previous video in which i've shown you that how we can do android penetration testing then go ahead and check it out the link is given in the description as well as you can see it on the right side of the screen also for those who are new to our channel and haven't checked out our website which is bepractical.tech then let me tell you guys that you are missing a lot of amazing stuffs just go and type bepractical.tech in your browser and you will be redirected to this site over here just go to the lab section where we are providing awesome real world scenario based account takeover vulnerabilities where you can increase your cyber security skills by hunting on each of these labs and gaining the uh, idea of how we can hack into anyone's account using web applications misconfiguration right so if you're interested then go ahead and check it out the link is given in the description as well and now with that being said let's get started so first thing first let's talk about what this tool is right so if you go to uh, google let me just go to google uh, and if we type jspector github we we'll see we have this awesome tool right over here so let's try to see what this tool is by the author itself so jspector is a burp suit extension that passively crawls javascript and automatically creates an issues with the url right and it can also look for dangerous methods found in the js file like some methods that we know in api pen testing for example we have this uh, dangerous methods like delete right update some of these methods can be vulnerable to idors right Let's try to see how we can integrate this tool. So normally if you see this extension is not pre-installed in burp, uh, burp suit basically, right? So we need to manually install this uh, particular extension, right? Let's see how we can do that. For example, what we need to do here is first thing first, we need to open up burp suit. Just let me open mine. Second thing is we need to copy this like this and we need to clone this into our machine. So let me just go to my desktop and then I'm going to type git clone and let's just paste it right over here like this. Let's hit enter. Let's wait a few seconds and the cloning has been done. Meanwhile, our burp suit is also ready. Let's just start the burp. Wait a few seconds. And here it is. As you can see right over here. Let me just yeah everything is working so now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna turn off the capturing for now and let's download something known as jython right what is jython jython is nothing but the support to run java and python simultaneously on a single standalone code right let's type jython and let's say standalone download something like this and don't worry for you guys this link will be given in the description you can just click on this and you'll be redirected to this particular web application over here then just click on this standalone you need to download this standalone version so please make sure to remember that and as you can see the file is getting downloaded let's wait for a few seconds and here as you can see the downloaded has been completed and now we can just go over here right we need to go to the extension settings then what we're going to do is we're going to click on this add right and then we're going to select this python right now over here you'll see that to run python extensions you must download the jython standalone jar which we have just downloaded so let's try to set up that so we just cancel it and we can just go to extensions right over here and here you see this the python environment and here we need to browse the jar file which we have downloaded over here let me just select that let's just see where this file it's not showing here let's go to browser let's see where the file is getting saved if we open it like this let's wait a few seconds and it is actually in the downloads folder okay let me just try to verify it again so the name of this file is jython standalone let's verify that so we're gonna go to downloads 
and we're gonna search for Jaithan. Let's see if we can find it like this. Nope. And just see over here, we have this Jaithan standalone right over here. Just click on open and we're good to go. Now, the first part has been completed and the main part, uh, to be honest, is completed, right? Now, the rest, rest of the thing is we just need to click on add, select Python. And now you're seeing that we're not getting that uh, warning over here. We select the file. Let's go to desktop where we have cloned the particular uh, application. I'm just go to desktop, so home, same like this. Yes, let's go here. We have this JS vector, and let's click on this py file. Click on open, and then click on next. We'll see the extension is loading right over here. Let's wait for a few seconds. And now, if everything is loaded successfully, you see this first method that JS vector extension loaded successfully right now it's also saying that the warning is here that the size of the output content is very limited no worries we are not interested in this but the main thing is that j specter has been installed in our machine now what we can do is we can simply just uh let's start the capture and for example let's say our target is bpractical.tech right do that like this and now what we can do is we can just open the browser like this and let me just close all of this and we can just turn on the the proxy settings let's go to be practical dot tech like this and if everything is working fine we should be able to see our site in the sitemap i don't know why we are not seeing this let me just try to refresh it again let's see whether we are getting the response yeah it's one response proceeded let's go here and you'll see we have this be practical dot tech right over here let's visit the labs for example let's go to lab 2 let's visit it as you can see that's normally opened in http let's try to use https wait a few seconds and now it's here lab has been opened let's go back to our verb suit let me just maximize it and let's see whether we have found any issues or not, right? So we have this issue definition. We can just go here, I guess. So here you have the dashboard and the 18 items had been added to sitemaps. If you go here, we'll see we have JS vector installed and working. Uh, just close it right now and if we go to specter and let's click on this export endpoints to the clipboard now it's saying right now is that no results found to be export right why it's saying this let's try to see for example you see we have all these links over here right if we see the uh inspector somewhere we should be able to see that the extension is working fine we can just go to the extension let's go to the output and here you go right we are seeing right now here is that there's no potentially dangerous JS method has been found right now but we have found some endpoints right we have two endpoints identified over here as well so and it's from this particular you know javascript file you can just visit this like let me just copy it right over here like this and we can just do something like this now hit enter you can see right now you're getting this message that you are unable to access this email address because i have particularly secured that right but this is an example that demonstrates that how this tool is useful for us so if you're using any other tools like link finder or any other things you'll notice that even though you're getting the uh, links right but you won't be able to get the dangerous JS methods like we know some J dangerous uh, JavaScript methods like this eval right which we can use to do bunch of dangerous stuff right similar to this we have so many JavaScript methods that can be dangerous let's say that can be uh, resulted in prototype pollutions or something like that right so this is how we can use JSpector in your web suit if you have any doubts if you have any issues feel free to let me know your doubts or issues in the comment section also 
do join our telegram channel if you want to stay updated with the latest trends and technologies going under cyber security as well as web, de web development and if you like the way i teach then i am currently running two courses the first one is hacking windows with python we're going to learn that how we can create our own custom payload that can hack any windows machine that can download and upload files execute system commands ac access webcams and do bunch of cool stuffs and the second thing is bug bounty the ultimate guide to hunt account takeovers where i have practically showed you that how we can look for account takeover vulnerabilities that can result in compromising anyone's account on the particular application because of the web application's misconfiguration right so both of these courses are fully practical demonstrated so if you are interested then go ahead and check it out the link is also given in the description and now with that being said keep hacking keep learning and thanks for watching